Solid Edge Electrical Design products offer a suite of applications for the design, simulation and manufacturing of electrical systems and wiring harnesses. Developed specifically for this set of tasks, Solid Edge Electrical Design automates many of the common manual operations that consume an engineer's time and thus reduces the opportunity for human error. Proven in a wide range of industries, Solid Edge Electrical Design software was developed to satisfy the requirements of companies where the ease of use and value are as important as functionality. Solid Edge Electrical Design consists of two elements, wiring design and harness design. Solid Edge wiring design is a schematic diagramming application featuring unique integrated electrical analysis and simulation. Solid Edge Harness Design is a wire harness design and layout tool that includes the creation of manufacturing documentation included in automated bills, materials and reports. Here we are going to focus on the capabilities of Solid Edge Wiring Design. Using the Quick Command Search tool, we can open and browse our projects. Here we'll open an existing project and look at the anatomy of a wiring schematic. A project can have many different designs and within the designs there can be multiple diagrams for either wiring schematics or wire harness designs. Taking a look at the power door locks diagram we can explore all the elements from within the design browser that make up the schematic such as devices, connectors, inlines, conductors and so on. With intelligent cross highlighting from either the diagram or the design browser it's easy for the designer to identify which object is which. Cross-referencing of wires and devices can be easily achieved and allow for quick navigation from one sheet to another, taking the guesswork out of where the electrical circuit goes when dealing with multi-sheet designs. Creating a new design and diagram within a design project is easily achieved. The name of the design and diagram are all that are required. However, additional information such as description can also be added if needed. The ability to change access rights can also be controlled. Drawing borders can be created and customised as required through the Symbol Library Manager and can be quickly changed from one size to another. For this diagram we are going to create a simple circuit to show the ease of use of solid edge wiring design. Accessing the symbol library, we can browse to our desired standard and choose the subcategory component required. Here we will place a single cell battery to start the design. We need some further components and to make the task easier we can use the filter to present the findings. We need to add a switch, a lamp and a ground symbol to our design. Symbols can be easily moved around the diagram if needed, either before the wires have been added or afterwards. We need to add some wires to complete the circuit. This is a simple process of selecting the pin on one component and then the pin on the other component. Devices and wires will get automatic numbering on placement, but these can be easily renamed to suit a specific convention if needs be. To validate our circuit, we can run a simulation analysis to check the electrical integrity of our design. 
Using the qualitative analysis, we are presented with a cyan coloured circuit, which means there is no current flowing through the circuit. We have the ability to change the behaviour of components, such as making the switch closed. Still, we have an inactive circuit, which is due to the lamp not being grounded. With the analysis still running, we can add the additional ground and connecting wire, which will turn the circuit green to indicate a current is now flowing through the design. As well as having the switch open or closed, we can also introduce failures so we have a full understanding of what may occur in the real world. A numerical simulation can also be run, which provides a higher level of detail on the circuit, given the information of voltage, currents and so on running through the wires and devices. This enhanced simulation could help identify whether a wire is overloaded and allow an engineer to spec the correct wire size in the virtual world, reducing potential failures in the field. Supplier library parts can be added to symbols if they're not already present. This will allow for a more complete design with physical components available in billing material reports. When performing a search, we have the ability to search by internal part number, supplier, or by customer. We can also add multiple search criteria to filter the results. The LAMP simulation is quite basic. However, we can open a different project to show the full scope and appreciate how the electrical performance of a system could be verified by changing different input criteria on devices and analysing the numerical feedback to get the electrical design right first time. To further explore the capabilities of solid edge wiring design, we carry out some additional tasks on a free phase circuit which is based on data shared with us by a customer called WashTech. As we can see, we have a multi-sheet design which even has an index page. Opening up the server motor sheet, we have some wiring to finish off. Instead of adding single wires, we can change to a free phase mode and use the multi-wire option to add the free phases at the same time. As we place the wires, we have options to change the representation by toggling the folding of bends or adding chamfers. We wish to rename the wires to make them specific to this part of the diagram. Within wiring and harness design, we have DRCs, or design rule checks, that analyzes the information contained within a design to check for correctness. There are many different checks that are performed, but a useful one, as seen here, is making sure both wire and component names are unique. Should we try to input a name which already exists, the name text will turn red and the system will prevent us confirming the value. Further work is needed and we could either open the required diagram from the browser or we could use the cross-reference links to navigate from one sheet to another. The power sheet needs completing and we'll do this by adding a motor from the parts library. We could either do a full search or if we know the name we can type it in and filter. Accessing the properties, we can change the name, see that a supplier part is assigned, and all the details such as part description, supplier name are listed. 
Additional detail, such as function, can be added and made visible on the schematic. We need the adjoining contact on wires. To save time, we can copy and paste to reuse data already on screen and then rename to suit. We also need to add an earth wire to the motor. In the same way as before, we can do a quick copy and paste. Wire properties can also be added, defining the colour, material and specification. Adding this additional information is an important step for many reasons. Firstly, it can provide us more accurate information when performing a simulation as the cross-sectional area will be taken into account. The wiring detail will also be included on any billing material reports that we create. And if we choose to bridge the data out to Solid Edge MCAD, then this information will also carry through. Finally, we may wish to add some tables to the diagram, either on the current sheet if there is room, or place on a dedicated sheet if needed. Different options are available for device lists and wireless, and these can be configured to show only the necessary columns of information. The tables will automatically be updated with the latest and correct information as the design is developed or changes, removing the need for any manual input of information. Reports can also be generated from the Reports tool. Default lists come as standard with the wiring design software. Here we will open a configured wire list, a device list and a pin list. Any published report can be printed or saved out. A report builder is also available so custom style reports can be built by the user. So we've seen through the short demonstration of Solid Edge wiring design that we have an easy to use, intelligent, automated tool that removes the need for labour intensive manual tasks and provides greater accuracy and efficiency when designing electrical schematic circuits. Solid Edge PCB Design and PCB Collaboration offer a suite of applications for design, validation and manufacturing of printed circuit boards. Solid Edge PCB Design provides a complete schematic design solution, making the capture and definition of a schematic simple and fast. The software comes with a modern, easy to use and easy to understand interface which gets users up and running quickly. Users can easily place parts, define the electronics, logical connectivity, connect them and edit the schematic to define net names. Solid Edge PCB Schematic pulls in the properties of library parts such as manufacturer part numbers and reference designators for identification within PCB layout and ensures the accurate generation of billing materials. Solid Edge PCB Schematic also provides intuitive project and design navigation, complete hierarchical support and advanced tools that manage design rules and attributes. At the heart of the Solid Edge PCB design software is the industry's most powerful PCB layout technology. These layout tools combine easy use with highly automated functionality to give engineers exceptional control over designs. Groundbreaking sketch router technology combines routing power with user control during interactive editing operations, producing high quality results with exceptional performance. Solid Edge PCB Collaboration provides users with a consistent and continuous communication channel that keeps design teams synchronised as they work in their own system's comfort zone, while ensuring the use of up-to-date and accurate data. As part of the collaboration process, designers can include notes or comments for each data element and in the collaboration data file itself in order to provide feedback or other relevant information. Solid Edge PCB Collaboration also displays a complete history of all exchanges that have taken place during ECAD MCAD collaboration for PCB design. We're going to start off in Solid Edge PCB Schematic. We can either create a new project or open an existing project from either the open menu or by accessing our recent designs. Once open, we are presented with thumbnail views which show the schematic design sheets at a high level. New pages can be added and pages can be renamed with ease. The thumbnails can be enlarged by using the zoom slider. Hierarchical block schematics are also shown in this view, as you can see by looking at the IO port 
and AMP areas underneath the top schematic area. We can quickly access an existing schematic. Here we have a completed design with ICs, capacitors, resistors and so on. Simple placement of components and using functions such as arrays allow for a clean schematic design which makes wiring this up quick and efficient. Let's now take a look how quick and easy it is to place components and wire up a schematic on a blank sheet. By accessing the left side drawer, we can gain access to the project and all the sheets in it, select parts from our library and check the properties for the active sheet that we are on. We can easily scroll through our library looking for a part. However, if you know what you require, the search bar can prove to be very powerful. The Symbols tab contains items such as Grounded Power and can also be searched. Whereas the Recent and Favourites tabs provide efficient reuse of commonly used components. Selecting a couple of ICs, we can quickly drag these onto the sheet and position and align as required. As we add the grounded and power symbols above and below the capacitor, alignment markers appear to indicate that the symbols are lined up and equally spaced for a clean design. Now that we added some symbols to the schematic, we can show the different connection methods. To create nets, you can use the abutment routing method, where we can touch the pins of the components together and drag away. Or we could use the create nets or end shortcut key and select the pins to establish the connection. To create multiple nets at the same time, we can use the multi connect function or M key. We can select a group of pins and route them either individually or area selecting the destination pins. If we accidentally dangle some nets, the built in verification tools alert us to the issue and allow us to take an appropriate action by either connecting or removing the dangling nets. This helps to stop errors before they happen and maintain a clean design. Next, we need to create a group of nets using a bus function. Tapping the B key, Naming the bus and defining the number of wires is all that is needed. The wires can then be connected using the rip nets command and selecting which signals to rip. This acts like a multi connect command to connect the nets. Finally, we need an array of capacitors. This is easy by selecting a component, hold shift and drag, and then control the spacing with the scroll wheel, giving a fast and efficient result. Repositioning of components and wires is a simple operation by selecting the geometry and dragging to the desired location. We want to view the hierarchy of schematic for the IO port and AMP. This can be accessed from the project tab by selecting blocks or by going back to the high level schematic. The IO port belongs on the block schematic. We have a preview image which means there is a circuit underneath. We can either preview the schematic or push into the design if we wish to interrogate further. If multiple hierarchical schematics are available on the same sheet, they can both be previewed at the same time. Taking a look at the AMP, we can see it as a two page circuit. As we enter the analog diagram, we are able to preview both pages with the navigation arrows.
You can search within a project and schematic design by typing specific search terms. As you search for diff on the microprocessor schematic, elements are highlighted indicating they match the search term. Double clicking on an item in the list under the search bar will center the view in the design on that item. If the search item is not on the open page, then it will open the correct schematic page and zoom into the selection. Within the project or start tab, we have the help documentation, which covers all of the functionality for PCB schematic in an easy to navigate PDF document. The shortcut commands open an interactive dialog which lists all of the shortcut commands for the schematic tool. The search bar allows for easy navigation of a specific command and presents back the relevant categories based on the search criteria. Under settings there are many options. Taking a look at verify we can understand and change the severity of the DRCs or design rule checks. We can see that the hanging dangling nets for the connectivity is active. And this is why the DRCs presented the earlier error on the schematic when performing the multi-net. Accessing the tools tab, we can launch the library manager. This is where you would go and manage and create library elements for your design within the parts, cells, symbols, and pad stack categories. The BOM tab allows us a real-time view of the billing material for the project. We can create a package to get all the detail from the schematic. Any new components added will then automatically be added to the billing material. All of the components using the project are listed with a part number, reference designator, quantities and so on. The list can be edited by either adding or removing columns and sorting by ascending or descending order. The BOM can be exported as a CSV, HTML file or PDF. An export option is also present on the Start tab. Clicking on PDF under Export Type will give the options on the type of detail to be exported. The option to add the bill of material can be selected, as can cross-references, which is useful to push through to the hierarchical schematics. PDFA standard compliance can also be selected. After saving to disk, we can view the PDF where we can navigate through the pages either scrolling with the mouse wheel or by using the page thumbnails. As we enter the block schematic, we can access the I.O. port by using the push command and also view all of the properties and attributes. The bill of material appears at the end of the PDF report. Once the schematic design is complete, we need to send the data through to Solid Edge PCB layout. On the synchronization tab, we have options for forward annotate and back annotate. Forward annotate has two options, package symbols, which is used to get the schematic ready to forward annotate to layout by assigning reference designators and checking to make sure that the library elements that exist in the design can be brought into layout without issue. This is also used to create an accurate and up-to-date bill of material. The second option does all the packaging of information, but also launches the PCB layout application. The back annotate option allows for the synchronization of any new content or changes in layout to be brought back into the schematic environment. We'll accept the default values in the packager window and then choose our desired template format. On completion of the packaging, Solid Edge PCB layout opens. Tip of the days are available, which provide useful information for new users, but can be easily disabled from future sessions. With the layout template loaded, 
we need to accept that we wish to allow the forward and take to continue. The project integration window appears and we can select the forward and take command to bring the schematic information into layout. Once complete, a confirmation box indicates that forward annotation was completed successfully and the traffic light in the project integration window turns green. Clicking on the display control command, we can configure how we wish our environment to be displayed. Since there are a lot of settings, sometimes it's easy to search for what you're looking for by clicking next to the minus along the top of the window and then type in a search term. As we type BOR, the object settings become filtered. Also, because what you want displayed in the tool can vary based on what you're currently doing, schemes can be created for display control settings. We currently have fabrication notes displayed in the layout view, which are present in the template design. Since we don't want to see them right now, we can change to the placement display. We need to modify some general settings for the board. Within setup parameters, we can define the units for the board design. On the VIA definitions tab, we can define the VIAs for the PCB. We currently have a through hole VIA set up in our design. The conductive and dielectric materials that make up the layers of the PCB are defined in the stack up editor. We can rename layers, change their thicknesses depending upon the requirements of the design. Any thickness changes are shown in the preview on the right. However, the settings are just as we need them for this design. Our PCB design needs to have a board outline, which defines the physical border of the PCB board. There are different ways a board outline can be created inside Edge PCB layout. We can import a step model and use the surface of the step model as a board outline. We can import a DXF or IDF, draw the board outline shape, or we can use the MCAD collaborator to import a board outline sent from the SolidEdge mechanical design. This being SolidEdge PCB design, we will use the MCAD collaborator to collaborate with mechanical to bring in the board outline and mounting hole locations. Along with this, some connectors that the mechanical designer has already placed based on where other components are in the overall product assembly will also be brought across. Within Solid Edge, we can access the PCB toolbar. The settings command allow us to set the project location and the 3D library location. Properties for any of the place components can be investigated. Information such as reference designator can be defined so the PCB layout can recognize the components after import. Launching the ECAD Collaborator, there are settings we can change if needed, such as file extension, schema, units, and collaboration directory. We need to capture the current board information as the baseline design. A quick click of Get PCB Data retrieves all the details so it can be written to the IDX file. The board outline, as well as the mounting hole information and the components, are presented in the tree. A file note can be added to the properties. In this case, telling the ECAD designer that this is the initial board layout. Clicking on send creates a baseline file which will be sent to PCB layout. We need to read the baseline file into SolidEdge PCB layout. First, we need to add a 3D view if one doesn't already exist. Then we can launch the MCAD Collaborator. We need to make sure that the collaboration directory is set correctly. Going to the Communication tab allows us to set the required data path. Clicking on the Files tab presents us with the baseline IDX file. Selecting the baseline file shows what is contained. We have the board outline, 
mounting holes and the components. The file note the MCAD designer added is also present. Once happy, we can click on apply to add the baseline to our design. The board outline has now been modified and the components that were placed by the mechanical designer have been added to the design. Also, the baseline file is shown in the history area on the left, indicating that it was applied to the design. Now that we have the board outline and mounting holes, we may want to fix some assets so they don't accidentally get moved whilst we place components. Selecting the five mounting holes, we can choose the fix command to lock the holes down. Opening the component explorer drawer, we can see all the components for the PCB design. The bold reference designator name indicates the components are yet to be placed, whereas the non-bold components are already placed on the layout. Components can be filtered by using the search field in the top row. Columns can also be sorted by selecting the column header. We'll filter U13 so that we can place the component. A quick drag is all it takes to position it on the board. This is an SOIC 16 package. However, there is also an alternative cell for this, a DIP16 package. We can quickly change the cell from the drop down list and see the difference between a through and surface mount type. Using the drop down list in the filter pane of the ref designator column, we can choose to show all U components. Selecting a group, we can drag onto the board and place sequentially in the order they were selected in the component explorer. Components can be easily moved or rotated as required. Using the push command on a component will move it to the opposite side of the board. Adding another selection of components to the board, we can easily align them to require justification. Components can be aligned to their center horizontally, their center vertically, top, bottom, left or right sides. As well as viewing the board in 2D, a 3D view can be used to help place components. Selection and manipulation of components is the same for both the 2D and the 3D editor windows. Also, 2D and 3D views can be shown simultaneously and sync together so a designer can see both representations of the board at the same time. Using the tile window function, we can show both 2D and 3D alongside each other. Rotating or zooming on one screen will do the same on the other. Likewise, moving a component in the 2D will show the components moving in the 3D. The same rotation and push commands used in the 2D can also be used in 3D. Under display control, the synchronization of 2D and 3D can be set and controlled by checking the drive 2D view and follow 3D view checkboxes. We'll quickly place a few more components and align them vertically. Within 3D, we can set 3D clearances and dynamic DRC validation. There are two different sets of clearances that can be set in 3D, minimum and optimal. We want to create a component-to-component -component 
and mechanical to component clearance as shown. Now when we move a component near another, we will see different violations. First we get a red warning, telling us the spacing is less than the minimum requirement. Then we get a yellow warning, telling us the spacing is less than the optimal clearance value. We'll quickly clear away all the components that we've placed down, as they're not actually needed for the design at this stage. Checks can also be done against mechanical objects that have been imported into the PCB 3D view as well. We want to place two large capacitors, C38 and C39, in the design on the left hand side of the board. Once placed, as the C38 is moved around the board, the 3D mechanical assembly that has been imported appears with either a red or yellow warning depending on whether the C38 component has hit a part of the assembly or is too close. To satisfy the DRC check, we'll move them slightly to the left as we need them in this region due to a nearby power connector. Since the capacitors on the board are large and we already know that they may interfere with one part of the mechanical assembly, we should send a proposal to the mechanical designer to make sure they won't interfere with anything else in the design. To create the exchange file we need to access the NCAP collaborator. As we have made changes to the board we need to send a proposal file rather than a baseline. Only the two capacitors will be in the component list. A file note can be added so the mechanical designer is aware of what has taken place or needs checking. Clicking on send creates the proposal file ready for Solid Edge Mechanical Design to read it in. Back in Solid Edge, the mechanical designer launches the ECAD collaborator tool. Clicking on the files header presents us with the proposal file that's been sent from PCB layout. After clicking on the file, the proposed changes which include the two large capacitors are shown. If the designer wanted to reject the change, then they could click the checkbox next to the element of the design that they're going to reject. In this case, we will accept the changes and send an acknowledgement response back to the ECAD so the two systems stay in sync. After processing the changes, the large capacitors are shown on the PCB board. The mechanical designer could do an interference check with the rest of the assembly. Back in Solid Edge PCB layout, in the MCAD collaborator window, notice that the MCAD response file is now in the files area. Selecting the response file and clicking apply at the bottom of the window will synchronise the PCB and MCAD environments with regard to this particular exchange. We've already talked about 3D constraints. However, there are other constraints for this design, specifically the ones related to the nets in the design. These constraints are created and edited in the Constraints Manager, which is accessed within the layout application. We wish to modify the clearances. Selecting the HS3W clearance rule, we need to update the trace to pad to 8000s. We also need to make the same changes to the trace to via, trace to plane and trace to SMD pad. Using the class to class clearance rules option, we want to use the predefined HS3W rules 
and apply them to the clock neck class. This saves time and helps reduce errors by manually changing the values for all other nets within the design. Within the constraint manager, differential pairs can be automatically created. Choosing some settings for the net name and pair net name, matches are automatically assigned. The differential pairs matching the search criteria appear in the proposed differential pair list. Click and apply creates the differential pairs that are suggested. Exploring the next tab, the new differential pairs appear in the list. The default net class can be overridden to the DP100 OHM net class. Looking at the net classes for DP100 OHM, we can see the rules relating to the trace widths, spacings, routable layers, and which vias to use for the differential pairs that were just created. Finally, users may want to create a new net class or a group of nets. This allows users to set trace width differential spacing and routable layers for a group of nets, as well as allow users to do things like create class to class clearance rules, which we talked about already. This isn't actually required for this example. So we'll just cancel this action. Once constraints for design have been set and the components have been placed, the design needs to be routed. Using Net Explorer, we can view the nets that need routing in the design. Nets can be filtered using the search field and you can also sort by selecting column headers. You can use the Net Explorer interface to create planning groups to make finding and routing nets easier in a design. Here we create a new user group for all of the data bus. Click on the data bus group, selects and highlights the nets on the board. We can also select from the net class list to highlight the F data nets. When there are surface mount components in a layout, fanout vias are used to connect to different layers of the board. You can fan out a component or a net on the board. One way to add fanouts to a component is by box selecting the pins and using the apply fanout pattern command. Another way to fan out a component is to use the fanout patterns dialog. Settings can be made for the alignment, direction, and spacing for the fan out. Finally, to fan out pins that belong to a specific net, you can click on a pin belonging to that net or the net in the Net Explorer. Selecting the ground net in the Net Explorer highlights all of the ground pins. Right clicking on any highlighted pin and selecting apply fan out patterns will make all ground nets become fanned out. When routing a design, the default is for online DRC to be activated. Online DRC maintains all of the space and constraints according to what has been put into Constraint Manager and does not allow for errors to be created while routing your design. Before we begin routing, we want to remove any previous routing that may have been done. This can be done by using the delete all traces and vias at command. We want to route several nets. Press F3 enters into the plow multi mode. We can now click a pin where we want the route to start, then move to the pin where we want it to finish. You can also auto finish a route by pressing F5 on the keyboard to automatically complete the route. 
Lastly, if there is a trace segment that you would like to move, click and drag that segment to where you want. The tool will push other traces if needed. While routing, there are several different routing styles that can be used. To cycle through the different styles when routing, tap F3 on the keyboard, or select the one you want to use in the editor control under the root tab, plow. While routing along trace, it may be necessary to pause routing to move to an area off screen. While creating a long trace, press the shift key and the trace routing is suspended. Right click in the layout window to resume routing. An alternative method to create routes is to use the groundbreaking sketch router, which combines routing power with user control during interactive editing operations. Sketch router produces high quality results with exceptional performance. Design intent and routing strategies in the form of a super efficient sketches allow PCB layout to automatically fan out, untangles and routes the associated nets with the quality of an experienced PCB designer. We want to create a route between the U18 and J10 components. In the next class, we can select the FData net class. Simply activating the draw sketch command and pressing 2 on the keyboard to begin the path on layer 2 of the design, we can simply sketch from the J10 to U18 component and the sketch router will automatically create the traces. Selecting the FAD DR net class from the Net Explorer, we want to create another route. However, we need to add a group of vias to transition the nets to a different layer. Activating the draw sketch command, choosing layer 2, we can sketch halfway. Hitting spacebar will add a group of vias and then the sketch can be completed. The via pattern that is used is dependent on what is best for the route that was sketched. In this instance, the via pattern was set to automatic. In the constraint manager, we created some differential pairs. Now we want to route them. We can click on one of the pins belonging to the differential pair attached to U3 and then go into plow multi mode by tapping F2. The two will automatically route the two traces belonging to the differential pair together using the spacing and trace widths defined in the constraint manager. We want to add a fan out pattern to U2. Once created, we can select a fan out via connected to the differential pair and go into plow mode. Tapping 6 on the keyboard will push the route into the bottom of the board. The route can be sketched straight down close to the designation pin. Tapping the spacebar creates another set of vias to move back to the top of the board and we then complete the route and adjust as necessary. Whilst creating the last route, there is a length monitor present which confirms whether the net lengths are tuned to proper constraint lengths. We can check in the constraints manager what values have been set. Looking at a diff pairs group, we can select delays and lengths. Selecting update all from the data actual menu tells us the differential pairs we routed are shorter than the rules in which the constraint manager calls for. So we need to tune the differential pairs to add extra length. Selecting one of the differential pair traces, we can select the manual tune option and the tuning box appears. Selecting the handle on the tuning box and dragging makes the serpentine taller, or we can add more of them until the tuning meter turns green, confirming the proper length constraints have been met. The diff pairs can be fixed to protect the traces from being moved unintentionally. A quick visit back to the constraint manager window and running an update all confirmed the diff pair is now in range. The tuning patterns can be altered in edit control. 
They are under the Edit Control, Route, Dialog, Tuning menu. Now that our design is complete, we can zoom out, close down the Net Explorer, and get ready to send the final design through to Solid Edge Mechanical. Launching the MCAD Collaborator, we can see the latest 3D representation of the board with all the components in place. We can navigate the Collaborator pane to see the components on the top and bottom sides of the board. We'll add a note, saying Final Design, and then send a new proposal file through to the MCAD designer. Over in Solid Edge, the designer opens the ECAD Collaborator as before. Selecting the Proposal 01 shows all of the details including the new components to be added. If happy with all of the proposal, the mechanical designer can click Apply and the latest information will be populated onto the board. Having the seamless connectivity between the ECAB and MCAD environments allows for the engineers to always be in sync and work efficiently and productively within their own environments, ensuring that no errors will be found downstream. Once fully imported, the mechanical designer can rotate the board to view both the top and bottom side components. The final thing the MCAD designer needs to do is add a new file note and send the response file back to the ECAD engineer. On exiting the collaborator, the mechanical designer can explore the PCB Pathfinder and can check the properties of any of the new components that have been imported. Back in PCB layout, the ECAD engineer needs to acknowledge the MCAD response 01 file as the final step. The final few steps we want to look at is generating the manufacturing output files that will be required to manufacture the PCB. From the output menu, we have options to create Gerber files, NC drill lists, silt screens, which we'll come back to shortly, and ODB++ files. Opening ODB++, we can assign an output job name, assign the ODB++ version, decide if we want to launch the ODB++ inside so we can visualise the manufacturing data within a viewer. We also need to set the output path, and this is where the ODB++ file will be saved to, and we'll need to pass this to the PCB fabrication vendor. There are many other options, but we'll leave them all as default. The CAM Compare tool will open up after the ODB++ file has been created. We can select whichever layers we wish so we can interrogate the output file. We'll move to the 2D view for this next step whilst we look at generating silt screens. Silt screen generation extracts reference designators and component outlines from each cell in the design and uses a process known as clipping to ensure that no silt screen data touches pads or solder mask areas. To make it easy to see, we'll use the silt top scheme from the display control menu. Whilst remaining in the display control, we can go to the fab tab and under Fabrication Object, we'll expand the Silt Screen folder and make sure Top is selected. Going to the Output menu, we can select Silt Screen Generator. We'll use the default settings and click OK. Back in Display Control, under Fabrication Objects, 
we can expand the silk screen items and disable outlines and reference designators to see only the generated silt screen. Zooming into J10 near the bottom middle of the board, we'll see that the reference designators is no longer displayed as we've just turned it off. If we toggle the reference designator back on, you will see that the reference designator overlap with the pads on the device, so some silt screen was removed. A designer should fix this problem before going to fabrication. Our final step is to output a PDF of our designs so they are easy to view by others. Selecting the file menu followed by printing and extended print we can view the sheets that will end up in the PDF. Clicking the contents tab allows us to control what is shown on a sheet in the PDF. The settings shown are for whatever layer was chosen in the sheets tab. Click OK will generate the PDF containing all of the selected sheets on the Sheets Setup tab. We can quickly navigate to the created PDF and open it and view the content by either selecting the sheet or the layer. So as we've seen through this demonstration, Solid Edge PCB design allows you to synchronize the electromechanical aspects of your printed circuit board design using industry proven schematic capture and PCB layout tools that allow the users to avoid costly redesign of both PCB and mechanical designs.